Hey hey, welcome back to the channel, it's awesome that you're tuning in. In today's video I want to dedicate lots more like a chit chat regarding handhelds itself. They can also be a very convenient video if you're just going to be stepping into the rabbit hole called handhelds from Aliexpress. The reason I wanted to make this video actually is because I want to do a chit chat about it and yeah there is a lot of stuff that you need to know before even getting into this. For a lot of people, subscribers here to the channel, thank you all for supporting me for such a long time. Some of them have been years with me over here and they have seen me reviewing all kinds of crappy products. That also implements when it comes to handhelds. I can still remember that I actually started with those X series devices. I think X6 was like a PlayStation Portable clone and the X12 or something was a PlayStation Vita clone. And it was quite cool to see that we have a device that you can pick up for a couple of dollars and has the possibility to play all kinds of different emulation. Think about NES, Sega Genesis and other cool system that I grew up with. But the overall emulation performance was also like quite disappointing and it was just like a hit or miss with these things. However, I think it's a quite interesting time that we're living because within a couple of years we have seen that so many of these devices have become better and better. However, the crappy products are still there and when it comes to sometimes the price points, it makes no sense if you need to pick up let's say an X-series device. Where also the good or at least better devices have become cheaper, we have reached a pinnacle of say quality that is interesting, particularly when you're looking at the money you're paying for it. But let's start where it all started, the X-series budget handheld solutions. I can tell you that now if you're going to be searching for one of these devices, they are like really cheap compared with brands like Paukiri or Amanik. However, also Amanik is like getting his own let's say lineup where Paukiri is also using the X-series, making this kind of like say confusing. But I wanted to actually showcase these like say PS Vita or PlayStation Portable models that they still selling with slightly different improvements. But the overall Malaysia performance is still that crappy that we have seen before. One of the great examples that these things are absolutely horrible when it comes to fighting games. Due of the let's say bad D-pad and the horrible cheap analog slider stick. The menu interface looks like a semi PlayStation Portable or PS Vita, but it has no touch capabilities and the overall menu looks very boring and works very sluggish. This thing comes also with some media features like in camera. Some of the X series they have been removed that, but also when you're looking at some video files you can watch on it. Yeah, it makes no sense whatsoever because most of these devices will come with a non IPS panel, where let's say some cheaper solutions will have IPS panels and look absolutely amazing. Where I started many many years ago when it comes to these reviews of X-Series devices or the PS Vita PlayStation Portable knockoffs, I can tell you that they are making no sense for buying them now. Because where they're asking, let's say $30, $40, we have so much better solutions. And sometimes if you're going to be slapping like say $10 or $20 above that price, we're getting like better overall quality, even from Embernic. So those X-Series devices where they look kind of cool and have like these very cool flashing intro menus, they make no sense whatsoever and they are a completely waste of money now. But if you're interested in what it actually is and how bad it is, I made full videos of these let's say X-series devices and they're kind of fun to look at but not actually to buy. And if you're thinking about it, hoping you see this video before you're going to be buying and wasting your money on them. What is kind of funny but also kind of sad that they keep re-releasing this X-series device where we have like here the X80 I think it's called the latest one. They are ripping off all kinds of things where we started off with PlayStation Portable and PS Vita clones. Now we're having like these Switch lookalike light but also Switch colors, themes, you name it. They are just doing the weirdest things with these devices. And the unfortunate part is when you're looking at the software it's still the same thing. And I mean in particular when they have been changing like removing the camera, having a slightly better display or having let's say a different interface look. The emulators behind them still suffer from the same problems. We also have the 640 by 480 budget handhelds, where these things are most of the time the same price like the S-Series or slightly like a little bit more expensive, think about $10, we're getting so much better quality. I've been doing all kinds of different reviews, think about the XU10, the RS35 or 36, there are so many different versions out there. And where they come with beautiful IPS panels, overall good interfaces and let's say emulation possibilities, they just blew these X-Series out of the water and they are making them absolutely pointless now. 
But it also brings the different problem. And the other problem is that we're having too many of these devices calling the 640 by 480 resolution device. These three models, the R35, the R36 and the XU10 are three quite good models. But I already reviewed many different other ones that let's say share the same specifications, particularly the screen resolution. And they're kind of misleading because we're having a different, let's say, rabbit hole inside and rabbit hole. And here we're having the biggest problem that these three devices are kind of cool and very good in many different ways. Where we have a lot of crappy products that cost almost the same, but don't result in having a good overall emulation performance. But there are so many different manufacturers now in China having so many different features and different kind of handhelds for especially somebody who's just starting into let's say the handheld scene it's going to be overwhelming of different choices we're having. I tried to keep up with all the kinds of videos and it even did some comparisons with three of those 640x480 handhelds. And that's simply to do because I just wanted to check out which one of the three is my favorite one and to help you guide through this jungle of different devices. However, when I'm making a video, they're already out of date because there are new versions coming out when it comes to the particular 640x480 handhelds. We have reviewed all kinds of different versions, but I think these three are one of the favorite ones that has simply to do because they're having just such an amazing overall, let's say the screens, controls and overall performance. Where like a lot of these, let's say X9 or X8 series have different software and they all are crappy most of the time. So Embernic is actually overflowing with releases. So from the start of this year, I'm making many of the different videos. They are keep releasing new and new models where they're trying to basically conquer every part of, let's say the handheld space, or I think that is the strategy. They're releasing all kinds of different models from like a couple of dollars all the way up to 200 plus with the RG556. There are many different devices out there and where they do keep consistency with quality products or at least better quality than most devices I've seen, yeah, there were a little bit of a problems with these things. What is interesting when you're looking at the Embernic emulation performance, with the new La Series RG35XX, we have all different form factors with the same kind of chipset. What is convenient so when the community or Embernic itself is releasing new firmware, it's going to be so much more uh, let's say easy to update and the overall performance will be significantly improved up in the future to a certain point of course. I think it's better interesting to see like what kind of direction they're going and I'm hoping we will keep doing this. And that was a simple reason, otherwise it's going to be absolutely an hot mess. When I'm looking into the collection and looking at some older models, I was surprised to see how many of those older models are not for sale anymore. And that is simply to do because when you're looking at some of the older handhelds, they make no sense to buy because where they have like nice looking metal shells, that the performance is not the same like buying a brand new, let's say, Emmenic product and that maybe costs even, let's say, less than the metal version. Think about, like I say, the RG, I think it's called the 405M. You know, and that's the major problem we're having when it comes to the auto products. And I'm hoping in the future there will be like a red line between of the specifications, but also when it comes to the devices. So if you're buying something that you're not feeling that you've just wasted a lot of money on expensive products that are completely pointless and out of date within a year. So far, it was absolutely an amazing journey when it comes to different devices they've released. I've been, like, say, experimenting the process and everything was happening where we started with some open dingooks, crappy X software and many other like solutions. We have a great community who is dedicated to improving software. The only thing that really bothers me is that we're having a lot of cool devices that are just completely out of date now. We have spent, or let's say, hard earned money on it. And out of that, they're like, out of date and where there some of them are still fun to play when it comes to an LDK or a retro game device there are a lot of them out there that makes no sense if it's on PlayStation 2 that they slept into let's say in case it's depending what kind of direction you want to go when it comes to emulation I think particularly when you're looking at the price point the quality of the displays but also when it comes to overall emulation performance we can find so many devices that have such an overall extreme good overall performance for the money you're paying for it. It's a crazy time if you think about it. Now one thing we don't need to forget is that this is all thanks to the community. I mean particularly when you're thinking about it, like we started playing emulation on let's say PCs. Modern Vintage Gamer made an absolutely amazing videos about those things. But 
dedication of so many people, hard work, like maybe late nights of coding, creating all of these solutions now. And thanks to that and all of the years development, we have now hardware they can bring with us and that can play thousands of retro games in perfect or at least best of perfect emulation. Um, it's absolutely crazy. I do find it interesting to see what it will bring in the future where we have like better and more affordable places to emulation, GameCube and Wii and how far it will go. I think particularly when it comes to let's say emulation performance, if the chips are getting faster and cheaper to produce, we're going to have like better solutions for less money. But if this development will go that fast that we have seen in the last couple of years, that is something we will see in the future. Thank you all for watching. I hope this video helped out. Give this video a like and it will be great to see you in the next video.